that we will cover is uh, Justine Willis, who did very, very well last month. Uh, she's got a new song here today called, uh, is that Tina or Tina? And I'm not sure, but here it is. Hey, 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 where have you been? Another moonlight that kisses your skin. She don't say nothing but cornflower blue. So many lovers, too many, too few. Justine Willis again. Kalik, you're up first, my friend. Okay. Um, Justine is just solid. Um, um, I like what's going on, love her voice. Um, <laughs> the only thing with this one to me, it, it, there's, there's positive and negatives because I love being surprised, and there were some surprises 
thrown in throughout the song. You know, I guess three fours back, you know, six, eight, five, four, <laughs> whatever we're going to try to get it. You know, it's all time. It's, it, you know and, and I like getting a su uh, surprise like that every now and then. Um, is it too much in, or, or was it too far down? I don't know. I probably had to listen to it a few times. It, it started feeling long to me after a while. But, um, I mean, there, you know, just solid. All, you know, I, I love what's going on. I'll say 8.5. 8.5. Good marks there, Justine. Uh, Mishka, what say um, you? Justine is solid, solid, solid. Um, I this this song didn't affect me at the way the last one did. I, I'm still wondering why it's Tina and, and not I Want You, but um, I think it's a really solid song. Um, I love I love a lot of the vocal things you're doing and and like the addition of those backgrounds that so you bring it at the top of the, the second hook. Um, it's, it, you're doing really great stuff. Um, but I'm going to give this one an eight. Eight. All right, Clint, what do you say? Yeah. So you know, we talk about intros all the time and, and, you know, if th this is another variation in the modern era, the intro was long, but the voice was in it, right? So bang, right away, we hear voice. So this is the variation you can end in your writing style if you want to have a little bit more of a harmonic introduction, it's a bit longer, but she brought the voice in right away. That's key. It's not about, you know, the intro being too long. It's just that we want to get to the voice as quickly as possible. So that's another example of an artist using the modern era of streaming about how to do that. Um, I'm a real fan of her voice and her performances. So I'm just a fan. Um, again, I think it's 12.8. I think I, I listened to it a couple of times now. It's not 3, 4, <laughs> 6, 4, but I'm, it's, well, it's a 12.8 vibe. It's a slow 12.8 vibe, which I think is kind of cool. Um, and also, I think there was some really interesting structure stuff on harmonic variation, which is nice for me. Um, again, I got to call out. I'm not a lyric guy. I am, but usually third. But this, I got sucked in and read the lyrics and loved them. So I think she's a poet. And I think she writes really interesting lyrics that need that is important and hard to do. Uh, again, I think the sectional variation stands out for me. So I think the song has legs, but it's too big edits away from being great. Um, I think there's enough details in here already that if you edited this down to three minutes or in that area, three to three and a half minutes, I think the song would blow up. So my key takeaway is great triple time vibe, wonderful artist voice, well-written and interesting lyrics, strong sectional variation with decent development, but edit, edit, edit down to three minutes give or take 20 seconds. If you get it down to this, a three minutes or something in the three minute soft song and, and really paid attention to those details, this song's good, really good. Eight out of 10. Hey, Clint, I'm going to ask you just to follow up there. What should the song be called, my friend? Oh, I, I'm with, I think what you would say and what Misha said shouldn't be called Tina. It's exactly what Misha said. I can't remember what the lyric was now, but that's the name of the song. Yeah, but there's nothing in here about Tina. Yeah, okay. No, that's why. I'm, Maybe it is. Yeah. Um, all right, she can answer that, I guess, uh, later on. Um, uh, Clarissa, you get to vote. I was definitely confused about the confused about the title. Oh, I thought it was an error, maybe because I don't see any, any Tina in the song. But I freaking love her voice, love her style. I love how it starts off with just the piano and the vocal, then it slowly builds up, and also her vocals get a lot stronger as the song went on. I think she's a really good songwriter. She like paints a picture in my mind, very descriptive language. And I quote, she don't see nothing but cornflower blue. I love it. Uh, I found that one <laughs> section that was, um, that was really different from the rest of the sections. I thought that was really interesting. It was a cool change. Um, if I had to change something, I think I would say that um, right after that section that I just mentioned, the one that's really different, maybe remove the section right after that part and then immediately get back into the, I want you, I want you. I think that would make a bigger impact, but I love it. I love her. I'll give her an 8.5. 8.5. All right. Um, my other take, I don't have much to say about this song. It's, it's, to me, I got lost in here somewhere. I think it's, it's, it's extremely wordy. I think it's too long. Uh, I don't understand why it's called Tina. Um, I, I, I don't get it. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry, Justine. I don't, I just don't get it. Yeah.